Let's take a moment and think about what the current status of iOS is. So in the fall of 2013, iOS 7 shipped. It was a major, major watershed event for the user interface of iOS. It was it brought tremendous changes. It, it brought that general flattening of the user interface in. That was a very important time. iOS 8, we can think of it, and I hate to use this term, but I will anyway. You can think of it as iOS 7 with a whole bunch of new developer-oriented APIs in it. Now, that's not really 100% true, but it's, it's pretty close. And then, obviously, there's always new devices. We've got in this fall of 2014, we've got the iPhone 6s. We've got various flavors of the iPads out there. Let's take a moment and think about some of the current devices that are out there. So we've got the uh, different flavors of the iPhone 6. Uh, and I actually found it kind of interesting that here in 2014, Apple actually shipped two different screen resolutions for the iPhone 6. They, they shipped the uh, 5.5 inch iPhone 6 Plus as well as the 4.7 inch iPhone 6. We've also got the iPhone 5S, which is the, a 4 inch device, an iPhone 5C, which is a 4 inch device, and those are, your, those are your major iPhones that are actually being shipped right now. There may be others in the channel at any particular moment. Then there are all different kinds of iPads that are out there and are available at various price points. Screen resolution tends to be one of the most important things that we as developers look at because we've got to go and figure out how are we going to go support all these screen resolutions that devices have. And if we just think about what's out there and is currently supported in iOS 8, we've got the iPhone 4S, which had 640 by 960. We've got the uh, iPhone 5 family of resolution, which is 640 by 1136, supported by the iPhone 5, 5S, 5C. We've got the iPhone 6 resolution. We've got the uh, 6 Plus resolution. And then we've also got the various iPad resolutions, depending on whether it's a retina device or a non-retina device. Because we have to remember, if we're in the iPad world, then the iPad 2, which is even as this is being recorded, a three and a half year old device uh, shipped in originally in 2011, this device is actually still supported with iOS 8. So what kind of problem does this require us to think about? What kind of problems do we have? Well, we do have all of these devices. We're always getting new devices about every year or so. Um, that does bring about the dreaded fragmentation issue. We think about fragmentation as something that only happens in the Android world. Well, guess what? We've got six different screen resolutions in the uh, iOS world. And that's we don't want to go and program things where we're hard coding. We're not, we don't want to look and say, oh, this is a screen resolution of an iPhone 5, so we need to do this. Or this is a screen resolution of a 6 Plus, and we should do something different. We want, we want to keep our code, our user interfaces, as easy to work with as possible. And we know from past experience from the web HTML world, if you were in it a long time ago, Putting code in to support different browsers was a bad idea. Putting code in your iOS code to support various screen resolutions specifically is also a bad idea. So we want to support them as easily as we can. Checking each screen resolution to see is what device it is, probably not what we want to do. And then we also have to remember that we do have older iOS apps that are out there looking for a moment at what is the current distribution of iOS versions. Well, as this is being recorded, and this is approximately mid-December 2014, um, we've got iOS 8 at 63%, iOS 7 at 33%,
and earlier versions of iOS taking up about 4%. Now, just to point out interesting cases on the numbers, the numbers for iOS uptake for iOS 8 has not been as fast as for, say, iOS 7 or iOS 6. And that's pretty much been acknowledged all around. However, when you do look at these numbers and then you compare them uh, just in the past little bit, say from the end of November, at the end of November the numbers were 60%, 35%, and uh, 5%. So that means that one, uh, we've got newer devices that are getting out there with the latest versions of iOS and that there are people who are out there who have previous versions that are updating. So I know that all of the devices I have, I do a you know relatively good job keeping them up, at least on the major versions of iOS. You know, I may not have iOS 8.11 across everyone or 8.12 or whatever the beginning is, but I at least do keep within major uh, versions. And I think a lot of people now, they are becoming more comfortable with iOS 8 they're upgrading their uh, devices as well. So let's start digging into some of the things that we, we need to do. So our application icons. How do we go about supporting the various devices? And this is a situation where we do have to have some, some images for different devices. So just to you know, mention some of the new ones, the iPhone 6 Plus, uh, because it has a higher density uh, pixel density. They want to have 180 by 180 pixels for your application icons. Your iPhone 6 and your iPhone 5 are sitting there at 120 because these are basically Retina devices. Um, same with the iPhone 4S. The Retina iPads are just, they're a little bit, the icons are a little bit larger. And then the uh, non Retina iPads that iPad mini and iPad 2 they are half the size on the width and height of the retina iPads what about startup screens this is something that kind of becomes a little bit interesting we've had to have a couple we've had to have a few different startup screens for different devices remember when we had the non retina iPhone we had a, a default dot ping with the iPhone 4s we had a default and then it had an at 2x uh, ping and then we had once again we had another uh, device or I'm sorry another uh, file name for a different image type um, a default uh, 568h at 2x dot ping uh, and those those images were you had to have three sets of images and now with the launch of iOS 8, you actually don't have to go through all this pain and agony because potentially we were sitting here looking at, uh, you know, six different startup screen images and that can be kind of painful. And what Apple's done is you literally just start with a, a storyboard. So you define the storyboard file that you're going to use for iOS 8 and then that storyboard gets displayed on all of your various devices. Now what we're going to do, we're going to switch over to Xamarin Studio and we'll take a look at the application icons and the startup sequence. All right, so now I'm over and I'm in Xamarin Studio. What I've got a I've got here is I've got a project and we're going to take a look at the application icons and the actual startup of the project. So let's take a let's take a quick look here um, at the application. What happens is um, the application starts up and it just shows a green background. Okay, nothing really special here, but let's take a look at our uh, code. Uh, we're sitting here, we're in an, just an example controller. This is where we're setting the, the background color. Not really anything special. However, I'm going to start showing the oops, properties so that we can set the um, startup screen. 
So I mentioned that you, you can now have a storyboard. What that's going to do is that's going to allow us to have a consistent, uh, basically a consistent UI across our different devices. And we don't have to have the five or six different startup images that we typically uh, show. So how do we do that? We've created a storyboard and then in the drop down that is within the iPhone launch images we select our launch screen. Okay. Now one thing that you'll still see here is you'll still see the support for the images. Okay. So you've got your non-retina, uh, your retina, uh, and then your retina 4 inch iPhone. Okay but we want to use a storyboard that we've created okay so here's that storyboard now one thing that I found the Xamarin documentation says hey on a storyboard that you're going to use for a launch screen don't use the Xamarin designer for that what I found happens is that there's something inside that storyboard that the Xamarin designer creates that something about iOS doesn't like. So I don't tend to get the storyboard if I open this file with the iOS designer. However, that's okay because I can still come in and I can do an open with. I open it over here in Xcode and I'll see my background that I'm expecting, which in this case is just a red background with a UI label on here uh, saying that this is the startup storyboard okay so the thing here we can still open our documents inside of uh, Xcode if we need to okay um, and have no fear if you open your storyboard inside the Xamarin iOS designer it doesn't corrupt it forever you just open it up inside Xcode save and then everything's fine again okay now what happens about our images I said that we wanted to make sure we've got our image support we can do that we're gonna go back into our project options we're gonna go into our iOS application scroll down just a little bit and here we go so for our iPhone icons we're gonna select app icons okay that's going to create this directory over here so underneath resources we go to the uh, images and then app icons and then by default you'll only get a contents.json file well we double click this guy and then we've got our various images that we're going to use okay so all I've done is I have put the uh, support for the Retina iPhones in as well as the Retina HD iPhone 6 Plus and in the various sizes that we need for support. Okay, and in th for this example, uh, we're only using the uh, iPhone 60 by 60, the 120 by 120, and the 180 by 180 resolutions. So now if we go back over here, uh, and this is just something I'd already deployed. Notice that we got both, we have the application icon image that we expected, and we're running in the iPhone 5S, but we also get that storyboard that we had set up as well. And then here we're going into our, our view controller, and this is just all happening as we would expect.